three and a half billion dollars of equity. The parties we're talking to, many of them can certainly write a check for net zero one on their own. So maybe you thought this YouTube channel was dead and buried, but it has resurrected and I'm back with more LinkedIn snooping and online research to present a new crazy, but still completely logical theory. In this video, I will investigate the possibility of a partnership between Jivo and one of the giants in the aviation industry, Boeing. It all started with this tweet, proclaiming Jivo and Boeing as main sponsors of the RSB annual conference. Boeing is the second largest manufacturer of aerospace technology and has a current market cap of $105 billion. can certainly write a check for that's or one on their own. And as a matter of fact, Boeing has already partnered with two other SAF producers. They have invested in Sky Energy's first SAF facility in the US. And they've also partnered with Alder Fuels with a common goal to scale SAF globally. In August, Boeing announced they will serve as aviation sector champion in a global sustainability alliance jointly established by the US government and the World Economic Forum to accelerate clean technologies and reduce carbon emissions. And they also disclosed that SAF expert Robert Boyd has joined their team. Robert Boyd is an aviation decarbonization specialist, and Boeing recruited him from IATA to work with global sustainability policy and partnerships. Do you remember this tweet from last year revealing that Jeevo's Karen O'Brien would work together with Robert Boyd in this committee? Unfortunately, Karen departed from Jeevo back in August, so I decided to investigate if anyone else at Jivo is connected to Robert Boyd or Boeing. And just like boom, Jivo put out this tweet on the 14th of November, saying Heather Manuel will participate in a panel discussion about SAF at the COP27 summit. So I googled it and hoped to find some more information about this event, and it turns out Heather's joined by Robert Boyd in this panel discussion. And wait, there's more, but first I need to provide some broader context. This is Lindsay Fitzgerald, Vice President of Government Relations at GEO. This recent LinkedIn post by GEO was liked by a number of people, including Sheila Reams, who is the Vice President of Environmental Sustainability at Boeing. So we may assume Lindsay and Sheila are somehow acquainted. Lindsay Fitzgerald liked this picture on LinkedIn. And as you can see, here's Robert Boyd. And this guy standing next to him is Brian Moran. And he's the Vice President of Global Sustainability and Partnerships at Boeing. Just for fun, I checked which companies he follows on LinkedIn. And surprise, surprise, Jiwoo was one among them. Now let's get back to the COP27 event. The day after the panel discussion with Heather Manuel, Robert Boyd made this post on LinkedIn. Brian Moran wrote this comment. Great to hear about the thoughtful contributions from our friends at Contis and Yivo. And Heather Manuel replied. It was a joy to share the stage with you and to finally meet you in person. Brian Moran also posted this bold quote. SAF will decarbonize every airplane. Hmm. Let's listen to him elaborate. But look, aviation has its role to play to decarbonize, no question. And, uh, and we at Boeing in particular have been working on that uh, for, for quite some time. And frankly, one of the most exciting um, pathways that we see is called sustainable aviation fuel. That is fuel made from something other than fossil. Uh, and we've flown uh, all kinds of uh, planes for the last 15 years on that. Um, it is technically de-risked. And we've, we've had a big contribution to that, but now that's an industrial challenge and it's a policy challenge. So that's part of why I'm here this week, is to talk to regulators and talk to partners about how do we scale the supply of sustainable aviation fuels, which make every airplane more sustainable, even business trips. So Boeing is all in on SAF, and so is their latest asset, Robert Boyd. We 
put significant emphasis on sustainable aviation fuel as really, I guess, going to do the heavy lifting uh, in terms of decarbonisation uh, out, out to 2050. And, and uh, probably many, many listeners have either seen or heard about ideas of electric or, or hydrogen as a, as a potential uh, option. These are really interesting, these are really exciting, and there has to be continued work uh, on this, but they won't by themselves solve um, the decarbonisation challenge. Um, just to be clear, why I say that is today, about three quarters of all of the uh, international emissions are from wide body long haul travel. You know, and the technology limitations don't allow for hydrogen or electric in that space just yet. Maybe it may be in due course, but today it's not It's not a viable solution. So SAP is the key uh, over the next 30 years. Still leaves a huge uh, mountain to climb in terms of scaling up. And as you say, you know, you're thinking, well, what are, the, what are these big barriers for faster scale up? Definitely uh, cost. If, if SAP was at cost, cost parity today every, and, and it was available, every airline would, would, would use it. It would be a, a complete no-brainer. Um, we need to uh, benefit from the efficiencies of getting scale. So that's really just uh, starting. There's a huge amount of uh, work, sort of research and development and technology, pure technology work on feedstock, uh, which can bring some of these prices down. Um, over, the, over the long run though, I, I, you know, I think uh, we're already seeing this in terms of different regulations that are uh, being brought in in different parts of the world. In the United States is a good example with their recent Inflation Reduction Act. That provides a huge incentive to, to develop you know, green hydrogen and or um, renewable fuels for both ground and, and air especially. So um, uh, there's a wave of supply coming coming along. And with that, I expect to see uh, you know, price improvements. In order to scale SAP, Obviously, more production facilities need to be built. And of course, this is also the main focus for Jiva right now, to get their first net zero plan built and ready for operation. And then they need to build net zero two and three and so on. But major construction projects demands proper financing. And this is why Jiva's bright future still seem a bit uncertain, in spite all the signed offtake agreements. This issue was addressed in the latest earnings conference call. I suggest you listen closely. One of the very important points that I want all shareholders to understand is that we don't like our, our stock price up here at Jivo, and uh, I, don't, I don't want to do more dilution, right? So how do you skin that cat? Yet we have to raise a bunch of money to go build out plants and projects. We intend to raise money at what we call a platform level. Oh, but it's beneath Jivo, it's a private company level. There, we would take funds in to a private company and that would that that private company beneath us would go about building these projects and adding debt to the, each project i predict we're going to be successful at this and raise money and bring in some really good partners and the debt solutions uh we'd expect these people to participate in that zero one to a degree and we'd also uh we're making progress on the debt as well we brought in uh, bankers, in addition to City, for that. City and Nomura Green Tech. Yeah, Nomura Green Tech, and uh, that's going well too. So there's lots of interest in the space. People don't know what to do with their money. There aren't that many solutions that can work. It's about you know showing that it all can be properly de-risked, put into a project format, getting the financing. And as I said, this isn't selling stock at the Jivo level. That's not what this is. This is about investing down beneath Jivo in in projects or groups of projects right and that's and that's i guess what i'm trying to understand is you put your equity in and then would you expect to have like two or three other partners per plant or do you think this goes with very strategic writing big checks along with you at the plant level for the equity i think what it would be is the platform itself a platform company as investors we're committed to investing in nz1 and additional nz projects and how that mix of capital goes in, how much actually gets spent is uh, specifically of how much is ours versus theirs, uh, and how many people participate. Well, that's part of the sausage making that we're doing. We've got to build up 400 million gallons uh, over the next five years. And that's like what? Eight plants, the equivalent size of NC1. That's one heck of a lot of money. That's going to right. take not one, just one partner, 
that's going to take multiple partners working together to go deploy that. I was going to say it's three to four billion dollars, three and a half billion dollars of equity. The parties we're talking to, many of them can certainly write a check for that zero one on their own, but we have a we're getting quite a bit of interest, so you know we'll have to accommodate as many people as we can on terms that work for us. So G is talking to financially strong partners and Boeing has taken a leading role to increase industry partnerships in expanding the supply of SAF. So both parties have good reason to sit down and have a serious discussion. And can you think of any good reason why Boeing wouldn't be interested in adding Jivo as one of their SAF partners? And before I round things off, I also want to highlight this comment by Brian Moran. Can't wait to partner with you and the team at Delta Airlines on this important work. As you probably know, Delta is one of Jeevo's prime customers, so a partnership between Delta and Boeing on scaling SAF supply could potentially mean helping out with the financing of Net Zero One. Delta has signed an agreement with Jeevo for 75 million gallons of SAF per year, so without any Net Zero plants, no SAF for Delta, and a failure for the aviation sector champion Boeing. So Boeing could make everyone very happy and satisfied by helping Jeevo financing a couple of net zero plans. Show me the money. So, if not Boeing, which partners do you think Jeevo is talking to? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you appreciate my videos, make sure to press the like button and subscribe to my channel. I make these videos just to inform and entertain, and you should not consider them as any kind of financial advice. I hope to release a new video soon, but until then, bye bye.